yeah. and you kept referring to him as your father, not your yeah. father, as your your Lord, but your father. Yeah. But did you have a relationship with your earthly father as well? When I was eight months old, my natural father um, was murdered. And so there was that growing up, that was like a missing piece. Yeah. And so encountering God, and I, it was also the the mercy of God I encountered him at that age, because I could literally, I could see how my life could have gone uh, like completely opposite direction, you know? And when I encountered him and knew like, even though I didn't have a natural father, I have a heavenly father mm -hmm. that loves me. And I remember like one of the most significant moments in my life, it was as a kid. I remember like my, my friends would tell me how like their dads, and you'll see it in movies, how their fathers would pick them up and spin them around. <laughs> and I would go- I'm teary eyed right now because this is, it's- yeah. yeah, and I would go home and I would like cry and I'm like, well, if I had a dad, he would pick me up and spin me around. And I didn't know who to tell that. And I remember one time in a dream, I was, I found myself in this garden, this beautiful garden and a man who like, and when I've had encounters with the Lord, you you can kind of see, not like see him, like I could describe or draw him, but you just know. But this was something different. I, I, it was like I was in the presence of someone, like a different manifestation of the Lord. And I couldn't see his face at all. It was just like this bright light. And he picks me up in the dream and starts spinning me around, spinning me around. <laughs> and I was so happy. And I was like crying tears of joy. And I waited up and I have like tears all over and I was like dad you did it for me you did it for me like that excitement knowing like even if I didn't have a natural father mm -hmm. I didn't lose anything I wasn't lacking anything you and know I think that is so beautiful yeah and so many people need to hear that because when we have issues with our natural fathers mm -hmm. whether it's because they did something or they weren't there yeah a lot of times it is hard to imagine having a father and having yeah that fatherly love. And that's why it's so important for everyone to know that yeah. God is your father first. Yeah. You know, first, yeah. yeah. And he's <laughs> there for you and he's yeah. going to allow you to be his daughter if you will allow it. And that's right. That relationship is so precious. Mm -hmm. I can definitely relate to you in that way. I mean, I do have an earthly father, but yeah. during the time I found God, he wasn't in my life. And I've always mm -hmm. wanted that fatherly connection. And that's when I found it with the Lord. And I was yeah. just so swept away by what that love felt like and it changed everything for me. Yeah. And so it's it's there for every single one of you. Yeah. Yeah. You've already had a strong foundation with God. Yeah. So I okay. I encountered God. I was nine years old okay. and I saw an angel. <laughs> so that was a whole that's a whole story to it. But I was at an age where I had many questions and doubts about God. And that was really because growing up in Nigeria, the churches that we used to go to as kids, they talked so much about hell. And it's like anything you do, you're going to hell. You're going to hell. Okay. And I was like, if he if this is like a fear tactic, send me to hell. <laughs> you know? Just, just I'm send like, me now. I'm like, I like freedom. <laughs> I don't feel like, like to be caged, you know? Right, right. So I had many questions. I was like, God, are you real? Because yeah. I don't know why you, why there's all this like fear about, you know, living this type of life. And mm -hmm. nine years old, I remember the first encounter, supernatural encounter was seeing an angel. Um, and after that, I began to hear the voice of God and he began, and I said, having encounters with the Lord. When you say voice, are you talking about audibly? I've, yeah, so I heard, I used to hear the voice of God audibly. Still do have, like I could count how many times I have. Okay. Um, but also in my, I think as a kid, it was because you're a child, mm -hmm. you don't question too much. That's true. So as a kid, even like in my inner knowing, you know, I just knew, you know how everyone has that voice in their head, but I could, I knew what was mine and yes. what was the Lord's. Yes. And there was no, I think it's for me, I, I call it like the advantage of being a child yes. because you're not like so caught up in adulting, like you know, let me study what science says about that. I was a kid. I'm like, okay, oh, this. And then you see the track record, like the things the Lord would tell me, that's how it played out. Mm -hmm. um, and it was always things that spoke of love and goodness. And I remember when I, when, like my first encounter with the Lord himself, it was such an overwhelming feeling of love. Mm -hmm. And I was like, this is who you are. You love people. You're not trying to send people to hell, like all this stuff. And that captivated my heart. So from that moment, 
I would say like I knew him as father before savior. Okay. So I, I, it was just a father daughter relationship and I would hear his voice and he would talk to me about things and it was not complicated, you know? Right. So it was that voice that, that the strength in that voice, the trust in that voice. Um, there were moments where I remember when I had, my appendix was swollen and it needed to be taken out. And, and I remember like my, we go to the hospital, the doctors are like, we need to get this out. And we go home, they give us all this meds, they schedule the surgery. And I was like, mom, I'm not taking this. Like, I'm going to talk to my dad and he's going to solve this. Yes. And I was like, dad, I need you to yes. fix this. You know, yes. I don't want to do surgery. Yes. And literally we go back to the hospital and the doctors are like, we don't know what happened. Your appendix went back to its normal size. Like, this is not, they, they couldn't explain it. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, my dad did that. It was just this childish knowing. And so when that same voice mm -hmm. told me, Hey, you're not going to, I don't have, I have a need of you in California, not in London. Yeah. And I was like, okay, you know, I guess we're going to California. And we started the process and <laughs> I ended up here. <laughs> That's amazing. Well, you yeah. know, when you say that you have that childlike faith, I mean, the yeah. Bible talks about that. Yeah. Unless you have the faith of a, of a child, you can't see the kingdom of God. Right. Because the Lord wants you to not question everything right. and to have that childlike expectancy. Just simplicity. Yes. I honestly believe like simplicity is a weapon against the enemy. Absolutely. I think we have made things so complicated, so mm -hmm. complex. We're trying to understand so many things, but how do you know this and that? But when you come to God as a kid, you know, it, it opens you up. First of all, it, it tells you like, I don't know everything. Like kids are curious. And I think in adulthood, we lose our curiosity okay. because of whatever experiences we have, whatever wins we've had in life, we start feeling ourselves a little bit, you know, and we lose this curiosity. We lose this hunger and awe. And I feel like when we can protect that, I believe in protecting your, that childlike state in every individual. Because when you can protect that, I mean, your relationship with God is something Beautiful. It this is. This video so is sponsored by myself and my luxury fragrance line, Fine Forever Fragrances. We have three very elegant, feminine, and unique fragrances that you would love. 2911 is our debut fragrance, which is a perfect feminine everyday, daytime, or date night fragrance. It exudes mystery, elegance, and warmth. Silent Storm is another fragrance that we have, and that fragrance is a decadent gourmand fragrance. It's rich, it's smooth, it's refined, and it has notes of sea salt, caramel, and it gives off an alluring and captivating impression when you wear it. And our final fragrance, Mustard Seed, is a sweet aquatic floral with pineapple, jasmine, and musk. It's perfect for brunch with the girls or basking in the sunshine. It is a sophisticated and memorable fragrance. So if you love to be the best smelling woman in the room, then you have to have these in your fragrance collection. Visit fineforever.com and use the code Dr. Daff for 10% off of your fragrances to support this show. Thank you.